Hi folks, so the question we're going to be doing today guys is a developments question, okay, and it's going to be based off this uh, chocolate sweets box here, the Scott's Clan box, okay. Uh, as you can see here, we have a pictorial view of the Scott's Clan box, and then we have another pictorial view as a line diagram over here of the drawing as well, okay. It says here, uh, the figure over shows a pictorial view, okay, of the prism, uh, which is based on the Scott's Clan box. Draw an elevation of the prism looking in the direction of arrow A. So we're going back to orthographic views here, an elevation in the direction of arrow A. So when we look in the direction of arrow A, it's going to appear on the left hand side, okay? And also, okay, we're also going to see this rectangular surface here at front. That is 65 long and it's 90 millimeters high. Okay, and then from the elevation it says, draw a plan of the prism projected from the elevation, and then part C, draw a surface development of that prism okay and as you can see here guys when you come down here the line diagram of the pictorial view here you can see how it folds out and then the final product over here as well okay uh, this is from page 86 guys also on the understanding technical graphics textbook uh, a lot of you might not have this now this is from an old syllabus uh, textbook here uh, so i'll link the photo of this to you as well okay so uh, what we're going to do guys, first of all, is starting off is we're going to start off with our orthographic views and XY line drawn in the elevation and the plan and then we will start on to the surface development. Okay. So, <clears throat> just zooming out there. So I'm going to start my XY line probably somewhere on the middle of the page guys. I'm going to start my XY line on the middle of my page. Keep it to the left hand side. So an XY line right there like that. Always labeling it X, Y. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw in the elevation view of it. Okay. So the elevation view, guys, is 65 long and it's 90 millimeters high. So I'm going to project up a height there, a rough height at the start, and it is 90 millimeters high. So I have to go a little bit higher there, as I can see. And where it's 90 millimeters projected across, there's my height. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heavy in my elevation. So there we go. That is the elevation view completed. Now, from the elevation, what we have to do is we have to project a plan view of the object as well. Okay, and the plan view, guys, is directly below the elevation. So, project down my length. Project down my length on this side. And usually in uh, orthographics, guys, we keep a distance anywhere from 10 to 20 millimeters between our views. I'm going to keep 15 in this case. So I measure down 15 from the XY line, project the line across. Now, in the drawing, it says that the depth of it is 40 millimeters from the back to the front, okay? So 40 millimeters down to the front. And we know the front is fully across here. It's heavy the whole way. Because what I'm essentially seeing here is this rectangular surface, okay? That is the front elevation of it. My plan view, I am going to see an edge view of that. When I look down on top of it, I see that front face as a line. Now, also at the back, we can see that it tapers in on both sides, and it tapers in a distance of 20 millimeters on both sides. So from this corner here, I'm going to measure in 20, and from this corner, I'm going to measure back 20. And at that point there, I'm going to connect up to either end. Just go over them now. So that is my plan view almost done. Completed there now. Okay, the last little bit just to complete the orthographic views. We have in our elevation as well a surface at the back, which is obviously the back surface and the two side surfaces. And in orthographic, you need to show hidden detail. So these surfaces, that surface in there, that rectangle inside in here, that is actually um, the back surface, and we wouldn't see it because the front surface is in front of it, but it would go in as hidden detail. And hidden detail hash lines the whole way down okay because I'm using a marker today it's probably a little bit more messy but you get the idea there's our hash lines the whole way down back surface side side and then the whole front as well 
Okay, so elevation plan completed. Now, next step I would always take, guys, when I'm working out my developments, is I want to work out how many sides and how many faces and how many tops, bottoms I have. Okay, so first of all, I have a top surface here, and the bottom surface is the exact same shape. So I've got two there for top and bottom. Okay, so I've top and bottom there, and I've also got two sides connected on here. So I have two sides, and then I've also got a front and a back. So front and back. So all together, we can see if we add them up, two plus two plus two, we have six surfaces already. We have a top and a bottom, we have uh, two sides, and we have a front and a back. Okay, now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to complete the surface development of this, okay? We have to draw in those six faces as true shapes, okay, when they fold out all together. So you can usually, guys, in a development, you can actually start it anywhere. But sometimes, because we already have the height from our elevation, or we already have the depth or the width from our plan, what we can actually do is we can just transfer from them straight across. So I'm going to take the height, because that's my biggest measurement on this, and I'm going to transfer those lines across there. Okay? And I'm going to pick about, yeah, I'll pick about here as a start point. Okay? And I'm going to start off by drawing my front surface. Okay? So my front surface, guys, I know is 65 millimeters long. So I'm essentially drawing that rectangle again. And what I can do is I can just take the measurements from anywhere on this orthographic drawing. So I'll take my front surface there at that distance, and I'm going to mark it out this way. So to get that front surface in, I'll sketch that in now. Shouldn't say sketch. <coughs> Draw that in. And now in that section there, I have my front done okay you don't have to write this but I just like to take them off as I'm doing them so there's the front and take that off okay now the next one I want to do is I know the front it can't connect to the back it only connects to the back via either side okay so the next that's actually going to be connected onto the front is one at this side and one at this side so I'm going to put one side here and one side here okay so to get the length of the sides now this distance here, okay, just show you there, this distance here, okay, that is the width from the front to the back, but if you look at that, that is not the length of my side, because if I was to mark over here, you can see that my pencil or my biro point is actually a little bit short of it. So what I need to do is I need to extend it out and take that distance. That is the true length of one of my sides, because as we look down on top of it, okay, I can see the side of this um, of this uh, structure as an edge view okay and as I see it as an edge view therefore it is a true length because it is parallel with the ground okay so I'm going to take that distance there which would be the same as this distance on the opposite side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it out from the front here and mark it out from the front here okay once I have that marked out on both sides I'll draw them up and draw it up here. So once again, there we go. We have now done a side and a side. So I'm going to write that in as well. A side and a side. Okay. And I'll take off the two of them. That's done. Okay. Two sides done there. Now, we have done the front. We have done a side. We have done this side. What we've left actually on the faces going upwards and vertical is actually the back face here. And we can see that the back face could connect onto this side or it could connect onto this side. Either or is absolutely fine. So once again, what we want to do is we want to take that as a true length. So I'm going to take this distance, which is actually 25 millimeters, take that distance there, and I'm going to connect it onto this side here, which is actually the left side. Okay. So there we go. That's the side there, that's the distance marked out, and I can now project that up. And that there is the back. There's our back surface, okay? So nice and easy there now. We have the back surface done as well, so I'll take that off. There we go. And as you can see, all we have left is the top and the bottom, okay? So the top and the bottom guys could connect on technically they could connect onto the back, 
they could actually connect onto the sides be a little bit more awkward if we were to connect them onto the sides because they'd actually have to fold over kind of at an angle okay and to be awkward taking measurements or we could connect them onto the front and I think probably the front one is the easiest, okay? And we get the same one, okay? You could connect one onto the front and you could connect it on at the back as well. But I think the front one is the easiest. So from the front one, I'm actually just going to project lines up and down, okay? I'm going to connect it on at the top and the bottom, okay? Top for the top surface, bottom for the bottom surface, okay? So somewhere up there is the top, somewhere down here is the bottom. What we want to do is we're going to take the depth. From our plan view, that distance there, which was 40 millimeters, okay, that distance right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark that up here, and we're going to mark it below. Okay. Having done that now, what we're going to do is project the line across, and then up here to the top, project the line across. Okay. And in those two positions now, guys, what we actually have is the top surface is going to fit in here, the bottom surface is going to fit in here. And we know now it's not a rectangle, okay, it's this shape here. So we have to make that shape. And some of you are probably wondering, okay, that shape is going to go straight on the top there. So I'll actually do the top surface first. I'm going to take, once again, this length here as a true length. Okay, I'm going to take that distance there as a true length. And I'm going to come to this point here, mark it off. Then come to this point, mark it off. And just to show you, I could have also done this. I could have marked that distance there on my compass. And I could have come up here and marked it also that way. And it gives me the exact same result. Okay, right there. And at those two points, I'm going to now connect them up here and here. Okay. That there is my top surface. Okay. And now I have to do the bottom. And the thing about the bottom is it's not going to actually go like this. Okay. It's going to be the opposite way around. It's going to go like this. Okay. Something like that. So what we can do is we could actually take the distance from over here again, but we're not. Because we have them already marked here. They'd have to match up. So that one there, wherever that is, line it up, mark it down. Line it up, mark it down. And there we go. That there is now the bottom surface as well. Okay, so I'll write that in. There's our bottom. And once again, come back here, have the bottom done, top done, six faces done. That is the question almost completed. The only thing I'd have to do now is heavy in my detail. So at this point, guys, I'm just going to speed up the video there while I heavy in the important detail. Okay. Right, folks, uh, that is the question completed there. We have the orthographic views done over here, where we have the elevation view here with the hidden detail, okay, and then we have the plan view down here. Um, with that, then, we worked out that there were six uh, faces altogether on this. We had the front, the two sides, uh, the back, uh, the bottom, and the top, okay? And all of that actually assembles together. Now, what you'll notice also is that the outside surfaces are in full heavy dark lines and the inside faces, okay, inside in here, I've actually done in hatch lines. And those hatch lines are actually what are known as, and I'll just put it in here, come with a red first. So right in there, that there, guys, is what's known as a fold line, okay? So they are fold lines where the surface if I was to cut this out out of the piece of paper and I cut out that exact shape and then I bent it all along these fold lines okay and made creases there this shape would all assemble together to make the 3d object of the Scots can box okay um, a little bit in that question there guys uh, not too tricky obviously that advances on from a simple object such as just a square base box or a rectangular box or so forth okay uh, where we had to work out these and these lines here these are the little tricky ones okay these ones right here 
they're the important ones okay um we had to work out the, the true lengths okay so very important there that line there as we look down on top of it is a true length okay and we use that measurement there to get this here this here here and here and so on okay i uh, hope you found that okay guys and uh, we will move on to another one of them in the next lesson okay